I want to welcome you to week one of a study in 2 Corinthians. You know, last week, we finished the last week, 27 weeks we had in the book of 1 Corinthians. And this week starts a, a series of study in 2 Corinthians. You know, this study has has been going on since June 21st of 2021. We started on this bookmark. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have one of these in him scripture bookmarks, get in contact with us. I'll be glad to send you one. won't cost you anything. Just contact me on the website, the-prodigalson.com, and I'll send you one. And and get into this study with us. This in him scripture study study has turned into something that that just is is thrilling to see what God is doing in in this world we live in to teach people who they are in Christ Jesus. You know, I never understood. I've said this before, but I never understood why God wanted me to do this podcast and to basically record everything. That I done everything that I wherever where I preached, I the Lord said stu- to to record this, and up until this year, just the last part of 2022, I started seeing and understanding why, because this is the doors are opening this ministry to reach out to the jails and the prisons of this country, to the inmates of this country, and to their families, and and from from their families. It's going around the world. It's going around the world to teach people who they are in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Not teach them a bunch of religion. Not put them in, in a place that, that they, they've been their entire life. And that's, you know, we're pulling them out of that, that religious place that they, they feel like they're just, they're just, just people that have, that'll never change. It's always making mistakes. No, we want the world to come to realize and know just how important they are to God and just how important they hate that he has made them to be in Christ Jesus. You know, we're part of a, of a church. The born-again children of God that, that live on this planet today are part of God's church, and we all have a, have a part to play in God's kingdom in this church, to help people see and, and find out what God has said about them for their entire life, for their entire Christian life. Because when you become a, a born-again child of God, when you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, God don't look at you the way, he's, uh, the way he looked at you up until that point. No, he starts looking at you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you come to that understanding of who God has made you to be in Christ Jesus, it'll change the way you look at yourself. It'll change the way you look at people around you. Because when you start looking through the eyes of God, through the eyes of his word and what he has written down for you to live in, when you start looking at the world like that and you start seeing who you are in Christ Jesus, then you can start believing and, and, and ministering to people the way you ought to be ministering to them with the love and the mercy and the grace that God has bestowed upon you and start loving people and lifting them up and showing them just how much God loves them and just what they can be in Christ Jesus if they're not born again, or who they are in Him if they are. Thank God today for all that He's showing us in His Word. Glory to God. Today I want to bring you my prayers for the world we live in, and they come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Oh, I thank God that that Paul brought these, these Ephesians prayers to us because that is that is my desire that the world would see and understand the love that Paul wanted for the Ephesians, that God has it for them. And, you know, Paul, the Ephesians didn't realize it, and Paul wanted them to understand it. And I want the world to understand just how good God is, just how much He cares for them, just how much He loves them. Ephesians one fifteen says, "Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus." and your love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom 
and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes more and more to that love every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 7. It says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the, of the suffering, so shall shall you be also of the consolation. Now, there again, I'm going to go back and read the uh, the, uh, the 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 New Living Translation and the Amplified Classic version. The New Living Translation of Second Corinthians one and seven said, "We are confident that that." As you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. The Amplified Classic says, And our hope for you, our joyful and confident expectation of good for you, is ever unwavering, unassured, and unshaken. For we know that just as you share and are partakers in our sufferings and calamities. You also share in our partakers in our comfort, consolation, and encouragement. Listen, this is pretty much going back and doing the same, same thing, saying the same thing that uh, that five says, except Paul's talking about his suffering. But I want you to understand something. There's comfort regardless. This is something that that I never really grasped in my lifetime. And that was that, that God was there for me regardless of where I was at. I, I spent uh, 15 years. I started in 03. To that, this year it'd be 20 years, but I really, in the last four or five years, hadn't really, hadn't really done a whole lot in our business. We pretty much, uh, the Lord's pretty much told us that, you, you know, you need to get about my best, my business. And 
you know, I, I'll, I'll go if, I, if somebody uh, needs me. But this is pretty much what I'm, I'm doing full time. This is a full time thing for us. But for years and years, I spent, I spent a decade on the road from 03 till about 13 or 14. And uh, I spent a decade by myself in, in motel rooms. And up until 2012, I, I struggled. I mean, I really did. And I can't say that I didn't struggle uh, after 2012. See, 2012, from 03 to 2012, uh, we're really from 2000 to 2012, I, I was completely out of the will of God. I was backslid. That's the reason this whole ministry is called the Prodigal Son Ministries, or, or this podcast is named the Prodigal Son. But for years, I, I I couldn't find comfort. I couldn't find a place for Stacy because I thought that I was just that bad of a person. I really did. And like I said yesterday, I know where the biggest part of that come from, but and I let that lie, that I let that lie uh, sway me from knowing what God was uh, wanted to do in my life. But but today I'm a I'm a completely different person. But I spent a lot of years looking in the mirror and not being able to find comfort. I really could try. I've done my best to find it in people. And the only the only comfort that I could ever find in this world was my wife and children, but that wasn't the comfort that I needed. the The comfort that I needed was Him, and and this this King James version it says, "Our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so you be." Also of the consolation or of the of the comfort that comes from him, and it was so it was so uh, easy to find comfort when I started realizing where, where the comfort was was originating from. You know, everybody. It's easy to say, "Well, let God comfort you." Well, that's the truth. It, it, it's the truth. I I grew up as a young adult. Now I wasn't raised in church. I didn't come up in church. My my mom and daddy, when I was maybe thirteen, fourteen years old, they they went to church for a little while and tried to to live a a, a Christian life, but that quickly you know fell right back into what they were doing before, and and they finally divorced for the last time. But uh. I never, I never realized that there was comfort in him, not in religion, but in him. And I never realized that comfort come from that, that book that, that I, I'd always had one. I can remember as a little boy having a little green testament that I'd been given somewhere, and it's probably somewhere at this house. But it's a little green New Testament, just a little small uh, New Testament. And I, if I'd known what was in that book was for me just as much as it was for everybody else, you know. See, I, I've said this over and over on this on this podcast. It wasn't until just a few years ago that I realized, realized that I could believe God's Word for myself. I could believe it for you, but I had a tough time believing it for myself. There's people all over this planet like this. I I, I'm, I know it. I know it. That's shout of a doubt. And and the sad part of it about about it is they'll never come to understand how much God loves them until they get they get in a place in their life where they start believing what He said, and and start standing on what He said. And that's what this this in Him Scripture study is all about is to teach people. To put people in a place that that they can see that God's for them, not against them. 
he's not some unpleasable tyrant that can't be pleased. I don't, I don't care where you've been or what you've done. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that uh, above all opinion, know and understand that God loves you. He cares for you. I don't care how many mistakes you you you've made. I don't care how many mistakes you're in the process of making right now. Listen to this podcast. I want you to know and realize that God loves you, and He will always love you, and He'll always be that heavenly Father that's looking out into the uh, on the horizon, looking for you to come to Him, whether it be come back to Him or come to Him and in, in, in for the first time ever in your life. God loves you, and he cares for you. He wants you to know that there is comfort that you can have in him. I'm telling you, finding out who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, past being born again, after you're born again, the most important thing in this world that you'll ever come to know, and that is who you are in him, who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. This this is so so real to me today that I a lot of times I can't put it in words. What well, how much I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what people need in their life. If you want to receive from God, if you want everything that God has for you, find out who you are, so you can receive it. Because there's a lot of people that live in this world. That they don't think they're good enough to receive something from God when Jesus Christ died to give you that privilege. I'm telling you, there's a, there's truth in this. There's truth in finding out who you are because past being born again after you're being after you're born again after you make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, the most important thing that you can ever do for yourself, for your family, your friends, your kids, your loved ones. Your your mom, your dad, your grandparents, or your grandchildren, or great-grandchildren. The most important thing that you'll ever do for them and for yourself is to find out what Jesus Christ made you to be in him and that you can walk in that, in that confidence. Remember what we've been talking about all week. Jesus said, and in this world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If you'll find out who you are, who you are in Jesus Christ, you'll come to find out that you are the same overcomer that He is, because you are abiding in Him. You have been sanctified and you have been justified by His sacrifice, and He wants the world to know that. He wants you to understand and know just how important you are to God and and your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that if you're born again. That the whole that got God's Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in you. And if you if you will become sensitive to that Spirit, He'll show you what to do. Find out who you are. Find out. Find that comfort, regardless of where you stand. Come to Jesus Christ today if you're not born again. If you've never been born again, make Him Lord today. Romans ten and nine says, "If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus." And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. It says you shall be saved. It says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. He wants you to know and understand that he's for you. He wants to save you today. Make him Lord. Make him Savior today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Now listen, if, you're, if you've never been to our website, go to the website. It's the-prodigalson.com. There's all kinds of resources on there, and they're free. Don't cost you a thing. You can download this phone app. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us all over. All you got to do is look. Go to our website and get this phone out. Get this podcast coming to you every day. Every day, six days a week, you can down, you can have this thing downloaded automatically to your phone so that you can listen to it. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the Word, and that's what you're going to get on this podcast. 
Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, if you're not a partner of this ministry, partners think about partner or think, think about partner with us. And partners, I want to thank you that you do partner with us. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. But if you are, I thank God for you. I thank God for everything that you do. And I pray God's blessing on you. I pray that you that, that he lifts you up. And I lift you up in prayer every day of this of this of my life. I pray for this world we live in every day of my life, but I pray for the partners, especially for the partners, because you partners, you're helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. And more than that, you're getting credit for what this ministry is doing all over the world, changing people's lives through the truth in God's word. Thank you. I thank God for partners today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.